The good evening here at Xfinity Center, Maryland 80, the Hofstra Pride 69. I'm Wayne Viner, Bruce Bosner, Mason Viner. Guys, look a little rough at halftime. The Terps were down 37 31. Bruce, what happened? Clearly, the best team we've played so far, and uh, they gave us a bit of a run. They were up by six going into the, into the second half. They had one kid hitting from 40 feet. He was five feet by, behind the, uh, the, the three-point uh, three line. line, the NBA yeah. three-point line. Justin Wright Foreman, he was getting about 25 a game. He looked like he was good for it, Mason. Yeah, just a score. A guy that a team like Hofstra needs to perform, and he, well, he did. Just it came down to depth, and Maryland just had it, and Hofstra, they really just didn't. And Bruce pointed that one out. To him. Sitting, sitting next to my man here. Yeah. I said early on, I said, this team's not going to be able to stay with us because they're playing five or six. We're playing nine. Well, they didn't have a backup center. You pointed out repeatedly right. that if you just get the ball inside, it changes the game. Yeah, well, Fernando, this is, this is the fourth game that when the ball goes down low to Fernando and Jalen Smith, so far we haven't played a team that has any answer. And, you know, is that going to happen to the Big Ten? I hope so. But... Not to the extent it's happening here. Uh, it's, go ahead. It's the classic do it till they stop it line. Right. That this team just said they're kind of iffy with it. Like they'll do it for three or four plays and then they'll stop doing it. And then they'll do it again and they'll go back up and then they let the other team back in the game. It's starting to turn into like a theme here. And I know a lot of people say it with the subs, but this year they've done a good job about leaving Fernando and Smith in the game. They just haven't gotten them the ball all the time. Well, I mean, Smith, Smith, they each had seven rebounds tonight, I think. And more so had a nice game, too. But the guy who's surprising me so far, and it should be surprising, is if you leave this kid Wiggins open, forget about it. Oh, he makes it. Well, the wide open shot. Right to Mason's. To Mason's left was a hot spot for Aaron Wiggins tonight. Yeah, I mean, it was just one after another. I think he had three or four threes. And, uh, and even Bruno got an assist. My guy at this point Ayala. is Eric Ayala. He is the 14 tonight. He is. Uh, he's the. He's a, He stirs the drink. He's this. You know. He, depth. They have depth, and that's the difference. You don't have to rely on 48 minute, 40 minutes from Cowan. Right. And you don't have to rely on Morsel playing 40 minutes at power forward. Right. And you got. You have enough depth. We've got to see Ivan Bender come back a little bit. Yep. Well, we'll, we'll he's get still him. rusty, but. We'll get to season. what the future holds here in a moment. This is the Viner Four Gates Bus Game Show. And of course, we'd like to thank Meyer Consulting Engineers of Rockville. We'll be back after this commercial. I'll tell you the key to that for me. There's a lot of things. We got the offensive rebounds, but I only had three threes. Like we, were, we were hoping he'd take five threes. He did. Dog only made three because I don't think he's done that. So, again, you got to pick the poison. You know, test Iola's shots or try to you know, guard the big guys. So. Thank you, Coach. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. Back here at Xfinity Center, happy Xfinity Center. Maryland takes it over Hofstra. Uh, but during this game, there's another game going on. Wayne ASB. Bruce, where did you and Mason run off to? Yeah, you guys disappeared on. Hello, Mace. Well, we went down to see uh, Todd at the volleyball game. The Terps were taking on number four Minnesota, and I got to say it, it was a sparse crowd here, but down there, it, it's loud. Yeah, it was rocking and rolling. Maryland won the first set. Really? That was it, though. Uh, they hung tough, lost 19-19 uh, and 24, or 23. Okay. And 25. that? 25. Th that's 25 it? to 23, yeah. All right, well, that, that about wraps up our first ever volleyball postgame show right yeah. there. Uh, Maryland comes back. It's Mount St. Mary's, 4 o'clock on Sunday. Anything to worry about there? No. Um, well, a quick note on that is, as Bruce pointed out, who is scheduling that game at 4 o'clock? 1 o'clock, Redskins. 1 o'clock Ravens. 1 o'clock Ravens. No, and Maryland soccer plays at? 1 o'clock. 
So which game are you going to? Uh, this week I'm going to the Ravens game because I want to see Lamar Jackson's first right. game. So what's up where RG3 if, if said he, a, played, all, he played scout team starting? Did, did Jackson miss practice this week? He had a flu or something, a flu bug. Okay. But yeah. is, RG3 could start. I thought that was the plan. Yeah. Uh, early on it was. Mason, you're thinking about going to CNC State at number 11 Maryland in this NCAA tournament. Still up for Sunday at 1? It's a good doubleheader. I mean, it's a packed weekend around yeah. here. I, I don't know if I'm going to make it. No promises for that. All right, so we got basketball tonight. Went pretty well, and I was talking to some of the boosters sitting on the basket. I said, if Maryland football's losing by six and a half time, that's good. Maryland basketball losing by six and a half, not you so worried. good. You aren't worried. After listening to you, anybody, look, who beat Notre Dame at Notre Dame? Was it last night, two nights ago? This is the same uh, game happened. It was Notre Dame and, and the other team beat Notre Dame 63-60. So it, it, it could happen. happen. It's going to happen. Could happen to Maryland. Right. You, you keep uh, playing these mid majors. Were, were you here the night that Coppin State wasn't here? It was a I call. was here. Coppin State. What's it? Uh, well, they hit 11 threes. Fang Mitchell. Right. They or when BU yep. came in here in the early Turgeon years. We talk about it. American beat. Uh, Mar beat uh, Gary Williams. Right. And I, that was here. And I'll tell you what else. If I remember, was it at Oregon State? Here. Beat Maryland yeah. here. It was uh, Obama's brother-in-law or something. Yes. Yeah, it was. A so there's yeah. been a lot of those games. You All know? right. All right. So could Maryland. it happen next week against could Marshall? It? Yes. Marshall Friday Marshall's night. Marshall's a good team. Marshall's uh, a good team. So could it happen tomorrow for Maryland being the underdog, beating Ohio State? Tell them, Mason, why there's no, there's very little shot. Yeah, you got to have a quarterback. Got to have a quarterback. But one thing that I will say about that is a lot of people think David Blau from Purdue is not a great quarterback, but he can throw the ball. He's not afraid to throw the ball, and a lot of times the ball does end up in the other team's hands. Right. But at least he's not afraid to throw the ball. And Purdue beat Ohio State. Yeah, Purdue beat Ohio State. The other thing is Rondell Moore. Now, if Stephon Diggs was still on the field for Maryland, mm -hmm. then then you got a chance. But Maryland just doesn't okay. have that Why is it only 14 points, Bruce? I don't know. If that's what it is, that's how the money's going. Mm -hmm. People are down at Ohio State, and maybe they were encouraged. Let's face it, Pogrom had a, had a pretty good game last week. He did. Minus the last drive and the fumble. Mm -hmm. He played pretty darn well. The note that I'll give you on the line is the more and more people see Dwayne Haskins, the less and less they like him. Yes. And Maryland's defense has been good. I've talked a lot about the Antoine Brooks not being able to take down the quarterback, but with Haskins, is if you knock him off his spot, things yep. start to get shaky. If you don't let him sit in the middle. A uh, one note, big positive on football. An academic All-American middle linebacker, Trey Watson, yeah. is, is an East Coast All-American. He's probably going to be an actual All-American, academic All-American linebacker, and Mason that's great. Mason and me gave the key point for tomorrow. We both agreed. We got to score first. To be in this game, we can't fall behind. We have to get on top. Okay. All right, and if they fall behind, who knows what happens. What was it last year against Ohio State? 62, 60, three or? 62 to 14. Okay. That's about right. Look, all right, I rarely say this because I know you've had people call call the show and say you're going to pick Maryland again. And I, no, no, I'm not this time. I just don't want to get blown out. Go beat Penn State. Get your sixth win. Make me the happiest guy on the planet. Tomorrow, just don't get blown out. I'm looking forward to Pogrom. Is Pogrom starting tomorrow? Yeah. Yes. The I'm only other about. quarterback who's played is Tyler DeSue. But is Kasim Hill out? Yeah, out, torn ACL, okay. out, out, okay. legitimately out. Uh, and we were debating on the way over here if Antoine Brooks might not be the third quarterback. We're not sure who the third quarterback is tomorrow. Well, they got to go to number two, it won't matter. Right. Look, very doubtful. For, why it's 14, I don't know. All right. I, I just, you would think it would be 21, 20. All right. Yeah, 28. One more shot out before we wrap this up. Who to who? to the field hockey team, which is Todd's favorite. And for the national championship on Sunday against the undefeated, which I love, yeah. North Carolina. Well, then why do you love it? I know you love the it. pressure's why? on Carolina. Maryland goes in there with... Uh, hey, house money? House money. That's a good way to put it. But one more uh, thing. You can't say house money in a national championship game. It'll be our ninth or our tenth. It'll be our ninth national championship if we get this done on Sunday. The Orioles today, major move, yep. hired Mike Elias from yep. Houston. Yep. We're going to have Stan the Fan on tomorrow yep. in the first segment of uh, the Sports Maven to right. talk about 
the addition yeah, of yeah. Michael Elias. And right, they say right. that he might bring the bench coach with him. He might. He, he was um, Lunau's right-hand man, his analytics guy. 36 anybody, years old. Anybody knows analytics, it's this guy. 36-year-old GM. Oh, Right here, baby. This guy could be the next one. Oh, right here. O-R-I-O-L-E. Yes, let's go Orioles. This could be the next one. It could be. You guys start uh, doing some saber metric studying. Absolutely. We'll get the man a saber tomorrow. We'll do some saber rattle. It's Ohio State, Maryland at noon. And we'll see you after the game with our post game show at 9 a.m. tomorrow, 13 hey, CBS Sports Radio. From College Park. What was the uh, 80 to 69. 80 to 610. All right, guys. We will see you tomorrow from Maryland Stadium.